Hi everyone and welcome to today's show. If this is your first time watching Heart Matters, we welcome you and hope that you enjoy it. If you're one of our faithful viewers, then we want to thank you so much for your support each week. On today's program, we'll hear how a man came to faith in God through the kindness and friendship of a local pastor. Tony Ferguson joins us today to share a bit of his journey to faith and how God has changed his life. Also singing for us today is Sharon Hodder from Lewisport. Once again, thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you enjoy the show.
Heart Matters is made possible through local support. Beaton's Realty, serving Gander and area. Visit beatonsrealty.ca today to see a full listing of properties in your area. Specializing in health and bulk food? Visit Nan's Pantry in the Gander Mall. Nan's Pantry has everything you're looking for. Operation Christmas Child is creating a ripple that's going around the globe. So it started with a box, and it's ending with communities and countries being changed. You know, these boxes are like a candle. It's a little bit of light that you take into a dark part of the world, and it makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. We want the children of the world to know that there is a God. He loves them. People come to faith in God in many ways. Some connect to a church, some people find God through difficult circumstances, while others see God in the kind actions of others. Listen now as Tony Ferguson shares his story of faith and how his life has changed as a result of that decision. My name is Tony Ferguson. I'm from, from here in Glovertown now. I've been here just over five years. I spent my life growing up in a military family. I lived all over Canada and we've lived in the States and spent some time over in Europe, uh, three years in Germany. Came from a, uh, a Christian home, but not, not very deeply rooted <laughs> in, in faith. Uh, we attended church on Sundays as a, as a family but uh, it was more like, more of an attendance, and that was it. I mean, there was there was no real teaching after after attending Sunday church. We went to sun, church on Sunday because Dad told us to, and we put on our, our special clothes and went to church and come home, took off our special clothes, and that was the end of end of church for the week. That was our obligation, and didn't really get too deep into it. Didn't understand very much about it as a child. <laughs> I spent 21 years with the military as a telecommunications lineman. Uh, spent a career at that. When uh, my trip with the military was over, we decided we would uh, settle down in Glovertown here and uh, chase her dream for a while, and spend some time near her family. So we moved to Glovertown, built our house, and started our, our little business, enjoying life here in Glovertown and working hard and making a, a civilian life for ourselves. So as I left the military, I uh, settled into civilian life and really took a good look a around me and I started to be surrounded by different kinds of people, especially here in Glovertown. And uh, you know, I befriended Pastor Rob. Uh, we became, started to become buddies and we started to share coffee from time to time. I was really working hard on myself. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was likely the Holy Spirit working on me, but of course I didn't recognize it at that point. Uh, my, my wife, Lisa, who was a really good, uh, good mentor for me and my family. She was bringing our boys up um, in, in faith. <laughs> she was raising them to, to know Jesus, and, and I guess she was teaching me at the same time. Well, I met Tony, the first time I met Tony was um, actually, uh, we had a, a movie night at the church, and um, got to meet Tony the first time I met him. Uh, it was after a fellowship hall there. And um, we started ta chatting, come to find out that he was a sort of a movie buff and really liked movies and he was out with his family and this sort of uh, sort of thing. And I think uh, it was either that Sunday, the next Sunday or the Sunday after we had a special guest, uh, Dan Bursey at the church. 
Tony's also not only a movie buff, but he's a family man, and uh, so he brought his kids out to see uh, see Dan, and, and, and so we sort of connected again. Tony, uh, you know, likes to help out where he can, and uh, we do like a roadside gospel service in our summer times. And uh, so I announced one Sunday when I believe Tony was there uh, that we needed some help. If anyone can give help this afternoon, we're meeting at church 4:30. Come by and help. And so Tony, being the kind of guy he is, wanted to help. He popped by 4:30, and I know that um, at one point there uh, it was when all the men had left, when we had dropped all of our gear off at the church after an open air uh, service. Uh, we started just sort of chatting, and uh, it was just me and Tony out here in the in the uh, in the foyer. And I remember Tony just sort of opening up a little bit and just saying, you know, Pastor, there's something that's connecting me here. There's something that's drawing me here to this church. And he didn't really know what it was. And I sort of explained to him, well, you know, that's the Holy Spirit. He's, he's drawing you here and he's drawing you to himself. And, um, and so the relationship sort of started. And with that, um, uh, this, I guess the spiritual side of it sort of to develop as well. So the friendship wasn't, wasn't hard to, to make or to build. And you know there was a draw there too, just in just in developing that friendship, and participating in the open air services. Uh, that 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 was easy as well because uh, you know it's a real nice group of men. The camaraderie was there. The you know the the, the guys that were, that were working with the open open air service and all the other volunteers at the church and stuff. Just really nice to be around. So it made it real easy to to want to be involved and to become involved and stay involved and stay engaged. And yeah, I just, I enjoyed being around it. It was on a Friday evening, on a Friday evening, yeah. And uh, I guess this text from Tony, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm wondering if you want to come into St. John's with me, road trip, I got to go pick up something. It'd be great to have some, someone with me. And I was like, oh man, like it's tomorrow Saturday, um, I, I had a paper due, I'm doing a, I was doing part of my master's in, uh, and I had a paper due the next day, and I booked off that Saturday. It's hard to get Saturday sometimes when you're in ministry. I was going to say no. <laughs> I was going to say, well, you know, I got the day booked off, and and um, uh, you know, I, I got a paper due, so uh, I'm sorry, you know, I can't help you this time. Maybe I'll go another time. And I was about to text that back when the Holy Spirit sort of just prompted my heart, and I heard the words, "Go with the man." And sort of when I tried to argue with the Holy Spirit, just sort of say, yeah, but, and he said, I'll help you with your paper. As clear as that, go with the man, I'll help you with your paper. So the next day he picked me up and we went to St. John's for the day. And so most of the day goes and we're on our way back now. And we still hadn't had any kind of chat about being saved, the Holy Spirit, what the Lord is doing and sort of picking up where we left off in a spiritual sense. I'm like, Lord, like, man, you told me to go. I spent this full day with Tony, and yet it's been just a, a, nothing really um, that I could see was, uh, was spiritual in a sense, like, you know, what I was looking for, right, to have that conversation. And, and it was not until he stopped for gas, just before he stopped for gas, I think, at Port Blanford, which is not that far away. And he brought up the fact that he was wondering about this whole Jesus thing. I'm wondering, you know, he had doubts, and I said, Tony, look, regardless if you're, if Jesus is standing on the shore, shoreline, and you're 500 yards from the shore, or you're, you know, you're 50 yards from the shore, in regards to your goodness, like, you know, like you're good or whatever, I just said, you can't get to Christ without his grace. You can't get to him unless it comes by faith. You have to take that step to him, and he'll reach out to you and, and, and draw you the rest of the way. I dropped Rob off, and I went home, and I went back to my went back about my business, went about my life. His words rang out with me, just uh, the analogy that he used, that I was just just, just knee deep or ankle deep in the waters and I just needed to take that extra, that one step onto the shore to, uh, to find my, my walk with Christ, to find my, my faith. And that's the words he used. He said, it's, you know, in the end, uh, you can do all the all the the learning, the teaching, the studying, the question as, asking. You can you can search all you want, but in the end, it's gonna there's gonna have to be that one leap of faith that you're gonna have to take on your own. It was it was Good Friday. Um, I had just finished showering. I was still in the tub. I was feeling like 
You know, this is a, a new day, a new start, a new life. What more perfect day than Good Friday? And I took my, my first step out of the tub onto the tile floor. And I said, that's it. There's my first step with Christ. And I gave my heart to the Lord. And I never looked back. Yeah, I remember you text me Good Friday morning. He said, P. Rob, I made it to the shore today. Like, for Tony, it wasn't so much giving up a lot of stuff, it was more just giving in to Christ. You know, some people think they gotta, you know, give up this and that and something else and, and, and whatever, but, you know, who he was, is a, he was a nice guy and, you know, but he just had to give in to Christ and, 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 um, and follow him, you know. Uh, one year later, uh, we had a water baptism service at our church on Easter Sunday evening, and, um, and I had the privilege of baptizing not just Tony, but his wife and his two boys. And so full family, uh, water baptismal, they made a commitment as a family, we're gonna serve the Lord. And almost like that scripture asked for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord, uh, almost became the motto of their, their family, you know? Asked for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. I feel a burden has been lifted. I feel like I can be free, I can be, I can be myself. I have a lot less pressure not only am I surrounded by loving people, but I'm surrounded by a loving spirit, a loving feeling that, uh, that helps, just helps guide me through my day. <laughs> when I made that first step out of the tub, if you will, I, 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 I it was still using Rob's analogy, I was picturing myself actually taking the step out of the water and onto the shore. And that's when, um, I guess I, I, I took the hand of Jesus. I took, I took Christ's hand and decided that I, I'm gonna walk with you everywhere you will have me walk because I know you're gonna be by my side from here on out. So that first step out of the bathtub that morning onto the floor, I imagined his footstep beside my footstep and his footsteps would be beside mine out of the bathroom, through the bedroom, down the hallway, from, from there on evermore. His footsteps will be right beside me because I, I'm choosing to walk with Christ and that's the way I pictured it, was walking with Christ, he's there with me. Well, if you've been enjoying our show, then we would love to hear from you. You can do that in a couple of ways. You can go to our website and click on the Feedback or Contact Us button right there on the main page. Or you can contact us through our Facebook page by simply typing Heart Matters in the search menu. Or you can follow us on Twitter using the handle HeartMattersNL. Heart Matters is made possible through local support. Need something shipped? Contact Dooley's Trucking in Gander. Ship with the best. Ship Dooley's Trucking. For all your furniture and building supply needs, see us first at Notre Dame Home Furnishings at Notre Dame Castle Building Centers, where our family's been serving yours for over 60 years. Terry's Tents, specializing in custom canvas products, picture framing, embroidery, and printing. Also carrying a wide variety of craft supplies, fabrics, leathers, and furs. Located at 326 Hamilton River Road in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Still to come on today's show. To the Point with Ralph Benson and more music from Sharon Hodder. Here on Heart Matters.
one thing most everyone loves to do is take a walk on the seashore or by the lake. Just sit here for a minute and listen to the water slapping on the rocks. It's relaxing, comforting to the mind. Just to look out over the water and the shoreline and the forest and feel like an escape from the noise and the rush and the pressure of everyday life. Why do we feel that way? I believe it's obvious. There is a sense of a connection to our Creator. Not everyone is open to God, but I sometimes come across people who are trying to find a connection to God, struggling to believe in Him. I recently talked with a young father who was going through some major struggles in his life and found himself searching to find God. He said, I have taken long walks along the trails on the seashore, visited the graveyard of loved ones, he hiked some big hills, and in those times he felt it was then that God was close to him. I believe there are many people trying to find God, but not sure how to do that. In this generation, how are people supposed to find God? Yes, a walk in the forest or a stroll on the lake is a good place, a good place to feel close to our Creator. He is there in the wind, in the sound of the water, the birds. It takes more than this, though, to find God. We recently had a lady on Heart Matters telling her story. One thing she said that stood out to me. In her search for God, she was asking her co-workers, her family, or whoever, do you believe in God, she would say? Do you think He exists? In most all cases, no one could give her a clear answer. In her struggle to find God, she said, it never came to me to go to church. What? We live in a day when it doesn't come to people to go to church. How are people supposed to find God? This is the bottom line. God uses people to lead people to Him. The lady on the program said she found a friend who knew God and shared her faith and invested in her life. We have to connect to people to connect them to God. This summer we have concerts in the park. No preaching, no praying, just singing good gospel songs about Jesus. We have had hot dogs and ice cream for connecting to people. Someone said, you guys have become the hot dog church. <laughs> One Sunday night after hot dog church, I went for a coffee with this young dad. We stopped in front of Jumping Bean and talked about his journey of trying to find God. He walked by the seashore, hiked the hills, stood in the graveyards and cried out, but he needed someone to lead him to Jesus. That night in front of Jumping Bean, he accepted Christ as his Savior. He found the answer. He still walks the trails and he still has those experiences, but now it's different because he has a relationship with his Creator. Did you know it's not recorded in the pages of the Bible that people are to sit in their churches and to wait for people to come? And the Bible asks the question, who will go? Who will I send? I would never have found a way to church if a person by the name of Glenn Parsons didn't come and my brother's garage and connect to me. Yes, I remember looking at the Northern Lights in Labrador years ago and trying to find God and feeling that there was something out there. There are many people around us who want God. They just need someone to show them the way. It may not come to them to go to church until you show them the way. You may be a connection that they need to get to their Creator. Will you be that person that God wants to use? Do you care enough to become the hot dog church? Do you care enough to become the light in the darkness? How beautiful are the feet of them who bring good news. God wants you and I to go. Close captioning for Heart Matters is brought to you by... King Insurance and Investment Solutions, serving Newfoundland and Labrador. For all your insurance and investment needs, contact King Insurance and Investment Solutions at 36 Cromer Avenue in Grand Falls, Windsor. Tremble as he puts me through the 
the fire. I'll trust the potter's hands. He knows what's best for me. He has a perfect plan. These human eyes can't see. mistakes though it seems I'll crumble down and I can hardly stand the pain but into his own design he is molding me I know though my word Well, that's all the time that we have for today, but we want to make sure that we take a moment to thank our guests, Sharon Hodder and Tony Ferguson, for being on today's program. We also want to remind you to drop us a message on our website or Facebook page. We love to stay connected with our viewers, and your messages are a great encouragement to us. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again next week.